Well, hey, you know, I might not have made it for the Halloween upload, but I guess I made it for the election upload. <laughs> this is uh, my review of Mad Doc Don, and this won't be the only Mad Don we'll have to be dealing with um, for the next few years. But anyways, my seething hatred for conservatives aside, I got this from Ahimo Adventures recently. Um, semi-recently. I feel like I got it like mid-October, but I've been really excited about it. It's one of the crown jewels of my collection right now, and I just want to take this time to talk about it really in depth. And uh, also, you know, just plug him, because he's, he's a really great guy. He has really great work, and I just want to show it off, you know? Um, to start with... You might begin to notice, but, uh, and you can see the accessories are painted. This was in, something he just, not every custom creator actually does this, which I do appreciate about him. I don't take issue with other creators not uh, painting the accessories. I think that's fine, but it's, uh, I really do appreciate it. It brings the whole little piece together. Um, here's another fun part. Yeah. So all the joints are actually on magnets and they're so powerful that, um, I have this little screw here, and they just kind of like stick together. It, it, I don't know if it's probably not going to do it. Here, let me see. Yeah, okay, well, it's not going to do it. Wait. No, okay. So it's not going to do it now, but on my shelf, actually, when I put the, the screw on, the the hand would start rotating, like the face of the screw. It's, it's, it's a little odd, but... Um, here we have the, the packaging that it comes with. Yeah, of course, it has its own you know custom artwork by Turbo Pork. Uh, finally, the perfect topping. That's not that's not what Don sounds like. I don't know why I did that voice for him. But he's the mad doctor. Um, something I find really funny is on the back. The uh the little part where it would be like legal stuff, you know. Colors and everything very, but toxicity is really guaranteed, which I think is cute. Um, nice. The packaging is pretty cute. There's no like bio or anything. That's fine. All the artwork's really enjoyable. It, the having packaging inherently is already like above and beyond. And you know, of course, as you can see here, Ahimo is so nice as to make this for all of his orders. Getting into accessories, um, he comes with he comes with a good bit. Um, he did come with a uh, I forget what it's called. It's, it's not called a stethoscope. It's you know the things they use to listen to your heartbeats. Um, mine unfortunately broke in shipping. Um, Ahimo was so nice though. He would he almost instantly was ready to ship me a new one, and I just told him to wait on it and to ship it with whatever I buy from him next because I will never in any sane mind ask a man to just ship a tiny little like resin accessory by itself that feels like such a waste of time and you know didn't want to trouble him it wasn't that big of a deal anyways but what he did come with what i do think is most notable is he has this little sandwich piece i think there are other versions of this that had like a chicken but here we have this and you can actually kind of put it in here kind of odd that's just not just part of the sculpt i feel like but i mean it's nice it's fun it's cute I know that's a verbal tick of mine. I like to say it's fun. It's cute. A lot. Um, here we have this little, this kind of like cool backpack, like generator thing. I really enjoy this. This definitely, um, it's this is kind of like a continuation of the Universal Monsters line I get the feel of. His coat is actually made of a glow-in-the-dark plastic. Um, I didn't know that until I was walking in the dark with him. And I was like, oh, <laughs> he glows. That's fun. So I like to think that this seems pretty like Dr. Frankenstein-esque. So this will definitely pair nice with like your, um, your, your other Universal Monsters. When I got them, I basically instantly took a bunch of pictures with him and the others. He fits in great with those. But this backpack, it's kind of like a, it's like a, you know, lightning rod. And this kind of sticks into these two little holes in his back. Now these pegs are pretty thin, so I'd be careful with them. Um, I'm sure they're probably thin for a reason, but I just get nervous looking at them. Uh, they were a little stiff at first, but now they kind of slide in pretty easy for me. There we are. I do love the look of this. Um, but you can also take off the whole hand itself, so the gun isn't, you know, just a hand piece. And this gun is really nice. I'm not sure if it's like this. 
I love the paintwork. I love these eels, especially. I remember when I was chatting with the guy, he actually told me these were inspired by the Little Mermaid and how they had eels in that. Um, the, the, all these little knobs, the light bulb. It's just all these really nice, fun stuff. And this gold is just superb. Actually, is this called actually like a different gold shade? It looks a little different, actually, now that I'm holding it in my hand. Just to go to show all like the, the cool attention to detail and talent that goes into this. I love the Playmates line so much. It's one of my favorite toy lines to ever exist. I think that there's just such an endless well of creativity in the, in the T Playmates TMNT line. And this figure and all the other customs by, you know, DeFoot and other creators really help bring that idea forward. And I'm really happy to have this in my collection. And I definitely do plan in the future to get more figures from Hemo. And I actually recommend all you do the same, especially, like, if you have the money. I mean, it's steep. Yeah, I mean, these are custom-created, high-quality materials. And, you know, they're, they're art pieces. And I think that definitely art deserves its price. Just no matter, you know, almost nine times out of ten, I rarely look at an art piece and think that I don't think that's worth the money. Because, you know, it's a demonstration of skill and talent. And I think that deserves to be recognized. Um, anyways, yeah. I just love this. It's really great. Um, something I did notice that was kind of interesting to me is that for being Donnie, he doesn't actually have, like, the, you know, the Playmates uh, different, like, skin tone. Here we have him next to the 1988 and the storage shell Donatello from Playmates. And, yeah, you can definitely tell that his skin tone is actually a little bit closer to, like, what Leo would have. And it's kind of curious to me. I wonder why he did that. I think it's because, you know, the other Turtles and the Universal Monsters line, um, they would also kind of have different skin tones. Notably, the, you know, Frank and Mike has a different skin tone. But that's because he's dead. I mean, you know, I guess his brain's out. So maybe this Don could be considered, you know, the undead. But I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, it's not a particular complaint. I do still like how the green looks. It's just interesting. You know, I would have assumed that he would have stuck with the colors, but... The purple is the same, which I do like. I think, no, the yellow on the emblem is the same, but the emblem design for the D is the same across them all. Um, he doesn't come with a bow staff, although what I like to do is with this screw I had earlier, you can kind of like put it in his hand and see that? It's kind of like a, it's like a new bow staff for him, which I think is fun. This is, what, <laughs> this is one of those things that I, I just enjoy about collecting sometimes. You just find some random ass object and put it in their hands. Um, if you want to pair this with, like, some mainline figures, I do think this looks nicer next to your... It probably looks nicer next to your 88 figures, to be honest. Um, most customs are designed after the 88 figures, frankly. But... Yeah, I mean, you could get these next to your storage shell. I like to use my storage shell turtles first, because I just like... They're my preferred turtles over the original 88, but... Yeah, they look good next to each other. Here we have next to some of your Universal Monsters Turtles. And yeah, he fits in perfect with them. Especially with uh, Frank and Mike here. They're just... They're fantastic. I love posing them with each other. They're always a lot of fun. Um, you also can see him there with Donnie in the back. Or, you know, Dracula Donnie. Camera died there. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this line is... This turtle is very stylistically in line with the original um, Universal Monsters. I think a lot of people kind of forget uh, that um, a lot of the turtles, it, it depends on the sculptor, I'm sure, but they all kind of fall between a scale of the 88 turtles and the uh, storage shell turtles. So, and this guy hits a good balance. He's right. I could say it in a million ways, but I do love this figure. And uh, getting into more details about the figure, um, in terms of articulation, you know, because of the magnet joints. He has swivels at each of the arms, the swivels at the forearms. Um, this one feels oddly like rough, so I would actually go more about like taking it off and turning it to whatever position you like. This rotates a little more smoothly. Um, it can't go all the way up though for the gun. The other arm has about the same articulation as the other one. Um, it's a little more curled in. I don't know if he's supposed to be holding something. But, you know, it's there. I would say that because of the material being more of a harder resin, 
if you have accessories that fits like snugly into their hand, you probably don't use that. Only put stuff in their hands that I would imagine is like pretty loose, like you know this screw. Yeah, to a certain point, like it like falls straight through. It's gotta be a little bit of a balancing thing, but you know, you can put stuff in there, which I guess is nice. His head, of course, moves all the way around. He has no leg movement on account of, you know, it being part of the sculpt. There's a magnet in his butt, though. Um, which I guess is, that's fine. It just means that these guys aren't quite as poseable as your uh, original TMNT stuff, but I think it's okay. Getting into some other details. We can get his head off and just get a closer look. He has this kind of big bite with the tongue out. I think that's cute. He didn't paint the uh, space in between the teeth, which I think is fine. But it does mean at a distance, you, it can kind of just look like a big white stuff. Like, not white stuff, like a big like white blob in his mouth. Um, he has googly eyes. They kind of move. Uh, mine, they're kind of frozen. Like, I'm fine with that. Yeah. His brain is really nice. There's some slight paint detail. I don't know if that quite picks up on camera, but intricately sculpted. Bandana is really nice. His skin has a slight texture to it that Playmates figures didn't usually have. Which is something that only once again happened for like some of like the undead turtles, you know, like the movie star stuff. So that's interesting. And then if we get the body up here. The wrinkling is done really nicely. I thought that it wouldn't quite pick up as nice, like in person, but it looks great. I hope a camera comes up a little <laughs> just as much. The gloves are really satisfying, even more on camera than in person, though, honestly. Um, but they still look great. Feet are cool. I love the metallic use of, like, this on the boot. The red slipper is a little bit, like, it sticks out a little bit, but I don't quite take too much issue with it. And now you have the gloves and other doctor's equipment. You have this one I like to think is, um, here, let me take this out. I like to think this is one of like the arms that you know fell off of uh, Frank and Mike. Cleaver, some potions and such. I love this buckle design. The Universal Monsters, for whatever reason, they had like experimental buckles for like their belts, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I do really enjoy the look of this figure without anything. You know, he just has. He just, he's just kind of standing there. In his experiments. A bit of a shorter review, I'm sure, but this figure is just nice. There's only so many ways I could say that. It's really fantastic. I got him for about like 170, which I know sounds steep, but when you get it in hand, it's one of those like, I don't regret this at all. This guy's perfect. I love him. He, I mean, as I said earlier, he's really is a crown jewel of my collection. I like keep him on one of my highest shelves. I always look at him. I always pick him up and kind of just move his joints around because it feels so nice and smooth. Magnet joints is really, it's such an innovative idea. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, it's not always 100% applicable. I would imagine part of the reason why he doesn't have leg joints is because I could, the magnets probably can't support the whole body, which it makes sense. Um, but like, they just feel really good. <laughs> I looked it up and like, those aren't getting, those aren't getting loose anytime soon. Like. I think they only lose like 1% of their power in a hundred years. Like they're kind of like super magnets. Like, you know, the permanent magnets that like aren't really that hard to get. But yeah, check out Hemo Adventures on Instagram. He does some great stuff. Um, I definitely plan to get more from him in the future. And hopefully I can do more reviews of his stuff because they look like a lot of fun. So I hope you had a good Halloween. I, um, I hope you're maintaining hope in these trying times when it comes to the election. And, um, yeah, I mean, have a good day, have a good night, and stay safe out there.